Department of Education. What solid is transportation in Iraq Department of Education? What page are on? Page five. And you know, we have both Ride and Ocean State. Correct. Um, Ride handles all our out of district transportation for um, students that attend schools out of the district. So that's typically our special education buses. And then the last question that I have is on page seven Triumvirate Environmental. What was that for? Go ahead. Please. What page? Seven out of eight. The last line. The last line. $3,617.88. Uh, that was the, they handle our medical uh, and hazardous disposal, so not the regular pumping, but the chemical for the science labs. So that, that range. Okay. Thank you. So, if I could just ask, um, as far as the water testing, I was just curious. Is, is there a requirement to go directly to the Rhinell Board of Public Health to have that done? And I'm just asking because we've got a really good chemistry department here. I mean, is this something that we could actually do in house? Or URI also does some, some work. Is there a requirement? Um, I, I'll look at that, Member Raffinelli. I'm pretty sure that that's dictated by our okay. uh, small. Community water uh, system, okay. which is already. It was just a question because there may have been other ways to Okay. We all set? Okay, quick motion. Motion to approve. Senator Jackers. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have correspondence. Any questions on that? Chris, good. Hey, you just, uh, I'm sorry, just a question. Uh, as far as the, the audit, um, I know we have the extension for the fifth that we need to shape to make the fifth. Is that oh, yeah. Yep, we received the, um, so we received the actuarial uh, report on Friday. That is in the hands of the auditor now. Um, she said she would need about a week to incorporate that into the, so we're on, we're on track. And we did have, I think, subsequently to the school committee meeting, we did have the conversation with um, the Auditor General and that went fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, this sixteen seventeen budget update. So if you don't mind, that, that's on the agenda for tomorrow evening, um, and we can get into whatever level of detail, but I will just let you know that we have successfully gotten it to zero. Awesome. Already. At this point. Yeah. Good. That's great. Awesome. Okay. Uh, new business. Approve the new high school course offerings. We have total business. So this is a, a course um, that the Phys Ed Department wants to add at the high school just to target students who want to work on uh, cardiovascular fitness, muscular strength, and so forth. Uh, you'll notice from my signature on the back that um, my recommendation, I have had a conversation with the curriculum director, the principal, and the athletic director. I have no problem with the course, but it, um, it can't be a course that kids can take in addition to their other PE requirement. This must meet their PE requirement. So um, basically it's no change in staff, it's just that the course will be an entire semester focused on cardiovascular work as opposed to the many different activities that they might do throughout the course of the semester. Is it still a half credit? Every other day? Yes. Okay. It sort of runs the same as every other phys ed class and it will run based on interest in enrollment. Okay. Have you got any questions? Yeah. Um, so does this require, maybe Shari can help out with this, um, the way it was described as cardiovascular, aerobic, you know, anaerobic, does it require any additional kind of training? 
because I, you know, I don't want to put kids in a situation where they they're they think they're getting something, <coughs> but it's it's not. You know, I, I don't want to. First of all, I don't want to be getting hurt. First, you know, mm -hmm. I know it's a low impact, but you know, is there anything you have to worry about? I, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, we're trained for that. We have to take conditioning classes and strength training, and we have to take so many courses for this that. I'm sure it's fine. I don't think they can do it. Hopefully they won't. <laughs> well, does our existing staff have that? Okay. okay. And again, I'm guessing that kids that will take it will be kids that are really interested in improving their overall health. Right. And I want them to get what they're asking for. Yeah. Yeah. policies about to come your way. We're getting to the end of reviewing the entire policy manual. We're down to around a dozen that we have left. Um, this, this one is um, expanding the existing policy on bus engine idling. That's a policy that we've had in place as a requirement, um, but we've expanded the policy to include um, emissions from vendor trucks, vehicles that are on the campus for variety of reasons, including drop-off um, work, on-site work. You know that we had um, an incident that occurred at one of our buildings that we talked about, and, um, and we wanted to make sure that we addressed it from a procedural and a policy perspective. So this is the recommended revision of the policy subcommittee. Any questions? Comments? We have a motion. Give me a motion to approve the amended policy 2400. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, unfinished business. Is there a capital project update? So tomorrow evening we have um, we have another meeting in the. And there are two really two big items on the agenda for tomorrow. The first is the budget workshop, and all of the district administrators will be present for that discussion. And then the second part of that meeting is about the capital project plan as we move forward. And we have, Bob and I have spent a lot of time working on this along with our treasurer, but we have the full report for tomorrow evening because it will tie into that conversation. So I have, we've updated that spreadsheet that I was presenting on a monthly basis until we were waiting really for the final audit number. So everything is plugged in and we'll do that presentation as part of tomorrow evening's discussion. Okay, any questions and comments? Um, I know that uh, we have sent a uh, resolution on behalf of the school committee that was by vote. Um, regarding the regionalization bonus. This is because there's a lot of discussion right now about the funding formula. There are three other regional school districts in the state. Each of them have also sent a resolution. And there's been a lot of conversation with senators and representatives as well. There is some discussion right now, and it's probably beyond the point of discussion. They're actually now solidifying some plans of the four school districts working together to form a coalition and um, and really advocate for some of the benefits that were promised to regional school districts at the time that they incentivized that process. Um, it looks like we have um, interest on the part of legislators to have a, a joint meeting of all of the regional school districts, town councils, school committees, but the timeline is pretty tight. Um, so we, I, I've spoken with Claudine and we had some dates that we proposed and we know that not everybody would be able to come, but it looks like, and I will confirm this, um, it looks like February 8th 
is a date that works for the majority of the representatives and senators who represent the areas covered by the four regional districts. Um, there would be representation of all school committees and invite to town councils. They want to hold this at the state house. And um, what time? 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it's evening. 6.30. Huh? 6.30. Yeah, so I do work. You don't have to even hide. I mean, not that, not that every, not everybody works, but, you know, these inconvenient hours. So and check us. So. 6.30, Yes, and I'll confirm. We have a, um, I, I just printed this. It's the last thing I did before I walked over here. But we have a, um, and a, a proposed agenda that has been developed where um, each of the four regional school district superintendents plays a role in facilitating this discussion. There's an opportunity for uh, members of the school committee, members of the town councils to speak. I would work with anybody to help prepare. prepare. Um, and we also want to make sure that all of the relevant points are brought up by somebody from each of the districts. So that's part of our, we have a tight time frame, but it's really because um, it's in that tight time frame that we can make a difference. Um, the, the, the real crux of the issue is that when regional school districts were, um, were considered, there was the regional um, incentive. That's what we wrote our letter about. And then there was um, the phase out of that regional incentive. So that went away. We no longer get that. In addition, what we experienced last year was the, um, I'll say, failure of the uh, of the governor's office and of Ride to maintain the the regional incentive for or the regional uh, transportation. I'll say it's an incentive. Um, and, and the law actually says that that, 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 that would be phased in over, over the course of a 10-year period to full funding for regional transportation. And that's what we lost last year. The current budget that is proposed by RIDE doesn't even request the increase that we are expected to get by what's covered in law. And so, therefore, we believe that if Ride doesn't ask for it, there's no reason to believe that the governor is going to add it in after the fact. So that's really what we want to tackle. That's the biggest issue that we want to tackle. Um, and again, there is, there's quite a bit of interest. And if we band together and we're all fighting for the same thing, then we can have a bigger impact. On top of that, I will tell you that um, there was a bill that was introduced on January 21st, which was Thursday, no. Thursday of last week. Um, it is referred to Senate Finance. It was introduced by Senators Felag, Fogarty, Pagliarini, Coyne, and Morgan. So this is just something that we should pay attention to. Senator Morgan does represent us. Um, it changes. Uh, 167.2-6, which is about categorical programs, and um, it reinstates the regional bonus. If this passes as is, it would reinstate the regional bonus, um, which would be 2% of the state share of the foundation education aid for the regionalized district. So that's a good amount of money that we no longer get after that phase-out period. So I don't know where this will go, but again, we have some generated interest to the point where they've already started to introduce some legislation um, and we want to get this meeting together so that we can continue to advocate for some financial benefits of regionalization that we believe were promised to us at the time that regional districts were encouraged to um, to be created. And what is the number of that bill? Do you have it? 16-7.2-6. Uh, okay. And I can forward everyone the link to this bill tomorrow morning. Um, I have a meeting in North Kingstown first thing in the morning, but when I get back, I can forward it. But this was 
in between my meeting that I had this afternoon with, this, with administrators and this meeting, I went back to the office, checked my email. This was one of the emails that came in, so I just quickly printed it. And um, while I was waiting for people to come in, I scanned it, and the, the changes represent reinstating the regionalization bonus. So I can share it with you, and it's something that you might want to follow, because obviously there is a financial benefit specifically for the four regional districts. So a lot of stuff going on, and you know, hopefully we can have some, some of you join us on the 8th if that is confirmed to be the date. Um, and it was legislators that agreed, that actually offered to host it at the State House in hopes that more individuals who will already be on the campus will just be able to join the conversation. So I think it's a good thing. Where is at the State House in um, the State House Lounge. And again, I, I have the proposed agenda. I just want to confirm that because this, this was an email that came to me in between the meetings as well. I just printed them both out. But I will confirm with the other superintendents, get this out to everybody tomorrow. It has the time, the date, the location, and the agenda as well. And that we can, depending on who is interested in coming, if there's anybody interested in speaking, that I can, um, I can help to kind of give you the talking points that we need in order to make sure that between the four of us, all of the relevant points are brought forward. Okay. I'll, I'll be there at 6.30. 6.30 is the proposed time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but you know, a.m. Yeah. No, p.m. <laughs> I am not going at 6.30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 If, 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 if it be slipping something under the radar, they do. Um, are you going to reach out to the towns? Yes. Okay. Yep. And I actually have, um, we actually composed a letter so it looks exactly the same coming from uh, each of the superintendents to the town councils. Okay. okay. So it's, we're delivering the same message. And, um, so I'll be in touch with West Greenwich and Exeter okay. tomorrow. What do you send to Mark and you send to Kevin also? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming that all the superintendents have to give that date before it's firm, right? Yeah. They have well, we've... The superintendents. So they've all agreed to that date. The legislature's have. And the oh, superintendents. Yeah. Okay, so the yeah. that's, a pretty good, that's a good date then, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, important dates and meetings. So tomorrow we have the budget workshop at 6 o'clock. And then uh, school committee on the 9th. And on the 11th, we have the joint meeting with the town councils on the budget. Okay. And we don't need executive session today. Go enjoy the families. <laughs> <laughs>